all right everyone so in this video I'm going to go over um, just two points in multicollinearity because I got like a couple of uh, questions about it after class and then I thought maybe it's easier to explain it on uh, the video so um, I hope I won't get disconnected it's Saturday and my family are in the house I'm just trying to finish that before anybody calls me so let's see so the two important things that we mentioned about multicollinearity is how it affects the estimation of the coefficient let's say beta hat g and how it affects the variance of this coefficient okay and then on the side you can think of this as if i'm talking about the variance then i'm also talking about the standard error of this coefficient which is simply equal to the square root of this variance of beta hat g okay so i'm mentioning the standard error because this is what we're using in the t-statistic so if i'm talking about how multicollinearity is affecting the coefficient and how the multicollinearity is affecting the variance or the standard error which is the square root of the variance then i'm talking about how the multicollinearity is also affecting the t statistic of the coefficient which is simply beta hat g minus beta hat g under the null if it is for example zero uh, under the standard error of this coefficient okay so that means if i'm talking about multicollinearity i'm talking about how it affects the numerator of a t-statistic how it affects the denominator of a t-statistic and then the effect would be reflected in t-statistic and the standard error also enters the confidence interval right so it's going to affect the confidence interval and the t-statistic is used in order to compute the p-value so the p-value would be affected right so everything so all the the the, the hypothesis testing would be inaccurate the estimation of the beta hat is not going to be inaccurate the estimation of its standard error is not going to be inaccurate so in this video i'm just going to uh let me first briefly just repeat this one how it's going to be affected and then i'm going to repeat the equation here because some of the people were not some of the students were not able to write it after me on the board um okay so so if i'm talking about the standard error let me choose white because it's nicer with the black so the standard error of beta hat j how it's affected okay uh if you know that the variance of beta hat g so this is a the variance of beta hat g is equal to the sum of the squared residual over n minus k minus 1 over the variance of x j okay so this is something that you know and i don't want to get you to get confused about the standard error of the regression and the standard error of the coefficient so if we take the square root of this variance the square root of this whole thing um, would give us the standard error of beta hat g which is simply the square root of this whole thing right you can write it as the standard error of the regression over the square root of the variance you can call it x j because we assume that you already know by now that ser is the square root of this part okay so it's very important to know the link between all of these um like variables because they all together make like the ser and the variance of x they together make the standard error of beta hat j so this is in the case that I don't have any uh, correlation between the axes, okay? So if I assume that I have y i is equal to beta naught plus beta one x one i plus beta two x two i, 
uh, plus the error term ui uh, and if i assume that uh, the there is no correlation between x1i and x2i then i can easily write this formula so this formula assumes that there is no connection between um, x and or x1 and x2 so they are not correlated or I can say it this way that if I do regress x1i on x2i so I have an intercept plus alpha 1 x2i plus a certain any other name of an error let's call it vi okay then there is no connection between these two or the r square of this regression uh, let me call it r square one because this is for the regression which i have x1 is equal to zero so if this is the case then if this is the case and i'm saying if right so i have like nobody's going to ask me how you got the zero i'm just saying if it's just an assumption so if this is the case then i can easily right then i can easily write that the variance of beta hat one is equal to the sum of the squared residual minus n minus k minus one over the variance of x one that's it okay so i'm gonna stop here because this is i have no correlation between um between x2 and x1 or x2 does not explain the variations in x1 but what's going to happen or what if again this is if what if i have r square that is not zero if the r square is not zero then i'm going to say what if i have an r square of um let me say a number, a certain number, let's say any number, I'm going to say 70%. Okay, so what I have, what if I have the explanation of x2 to the, to the variations in x1 is 70%, then I have some link between the two. Then I have to adjust this variance. So this variance would have to have a factor here, as I told you in class, that would count account for this correlation previously the r square or this term here was equal to one right because i had one minus zero was equal to one but now it's one minus 0.7 so it's it's a term right it's it's a number so it's 0.3 now so anytime i have an r square of a certain degree that is more than zero then it will affect the computation of the variance and it's very important for you to understand this link so what if I'm just going to change the color so as r square increases right the variance of beta would increase okay so it's in the it has a negative sign in the front okay so every time this one increases you will get a smaller and smaller number in the denominator and if the denominator decreases then the variance would increase again holding everything as constant so anytime i have an r square of above zero then this would affect the computation of the variance of the beta and it would be reflected right in the variance of the beta it would be also reflected if the variance increases the standard error would increase the t statistic would decrease and when i say decrease or increase again just imagine this one and it's this is the shaded region so the t statistic decrease means that it's going closer to the zero in absolute value let's say meaning that you are in the acceptance region in other words you're most likely going to fail to reject the null in cases when you could have rejected it okay so um 
so this is the first part so the first part we're talking about i keep moving between the slides is or what i finished talking about is the variance so i just kind of repeated something that i've done in class so i'm done with this let me stop here and i'm going to record for you another video on the beta head chain